Hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Itao, and today I'll be um, going the, through the hacker tools on LaTeX. Um, so um, we are NUS hackers, and we organize. So currently, this uh, workshop is part of hacker tools, and this is so um, hacker school is which goes through some other stuff related to um, um, like more software kind of stuff. And hacker tools is more like um, the the tools that you use to write your software and kind of stuff. Um, and then we also have Friday Hacks and our hack and roll will be coming up next uh, next year, about, around January. So we can keep a lookout for that. Um, so I'm a Yoshi computer science student and I've learned LaTeX through using it for homework and some Europe reports. Um, so I'm currently a hackers core team member and I like to do a bit of um, my free time I like to do a bit of running, cycling and like chess and like guitar and stuff. Um, so if you don't have a text distrib distribution or like text studio, um, you can just use uh, Overleaf. So um, like if you use Overleaf, it will probably look something like this once you sign in the Google and the stuff. Yeah. So um yeah it's 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 usable uh, something like google docs um okay so i'll just uh, let me see uh, okay maybe i'll just start um where can we download the slides okay uh yeah so we can download the slides here okay actually let me just drop the link in the Zoom chat. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, text studio. Uh okay. My is my mic what okay, my mic volume is okay. Um yeah, okay, I'll start. So so a uh, brief introduction to what LaTeX is. So it's a kind of like a mark, markup language. In a sense, like HTML is also a markup language. Like you can like have like text and like, and, and then you have like format the text in a certain way. So most editors you probably use before LaTeX will probably be in, it's called like those, what you see is what you get. Like those like Microsoft Word and, or maybe like if you're using Apple, it can like pages or the Google Docs. So like those is like you, yeah, but but LaTeX you write it in plain text instead, and like you compile the plain text like the code, and you get like a PDF or something. So, um, it started off as a writing tool for like mathematicians and computer scientists, and nowadays you can use it to, um, write like um your research reports. You can use it to um do your math homework or physics homework, chem homework or something like that. Um. So it's built on top of tech by Leslie Lamport, who was a, a Turing Award winner. And yeah, um, so sometimes in um across the internet, like Stack Overflow, the LaTeX and tech, like people use it kind of interchangeably. Um, yeah, so um, tech is like a typesetting system used by um Donald Knuth. Um, so he was trying to write this textbook called uh, The Art of Computer Programming and then he was like not very happy with the typesetting. So he had um, two goals in like basically let people write um, high quality books with minimal effort. And like if, if you have like a system that like if you use it on a different computer, it will give the same result. Um, so this is just some trivia. Um, so the version number of tech like approaches pi, and like current version is like this. Um, okay, so what what can you use LaTeX for? So you can write your research reports. You can uh, if you, if you happen to be writing a book like a like a textbook, you can use it to create like a presentation slides like this slides were using um created using Beamer package in LaTeX. And um, other stuff like you can do your homework, you can like anything that you need, like typesetting kind of stuff. Um, so <clears throat> some um basic LaTeX syntax, how it works is um so you have a there's there's kind of like two ways of uh using like writing a LaTeX kind of like 
syntax. So the first one is like the command syntax. So you have this backslash command and in, you have a square brackets and you also have like these curly braces. So in the square brackets are the optional arguments. Like you can just omit the square brackets completely if you don't need these arguments. And then the curly braces are like the com compulsory arguments. Yeah, so like, I, 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 I can show you more examples of this later. Yeah, and the second way of using it is instead of the command here, you can slash begin like the command name here. And then whatever that's be between these two curly braces will be formatted in a way like this. I say if this was like italicized or like text bold front or something, then like everything here in the middle would be bolded. So it's like something like HTML, like if you have like this open bracket and this like close bracket thing. Yeah. Um, so comments, you can use this uh, percentage sign to like write comments in LaTeX. Um, maybe I can, yeah, I, 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 can, I can do a quick demo. Um, Okay, I, I, I demo some of this stuff later. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, okay, so there's usually, um, in, in, so in LaTeX, there's always like, a, like a, this thing called a document class. So um, usually if you're just like writing a, like a plain LaTeX, you will just be called article, but this can be also be something else. Like if you have your own, um, LaTeX dot class file, it will be the name of that. And then, yeah, so, but, but usually it will just be article. And there's also other, st other, other, other stuff, like um, if you're using Beamer, it will be the, the, like a Beamer. And then like, yeah, but for this, um, like if you, if you just try it somewhere here and like say, um, and, uh, okay, sorry. Let me see if I missed out anything that I need. So I have document class, okay. I don't need a title. Oh yeah, so um, if you're use if you're using Text Studio, um, you, you if you install it, it might look something like this. I'm not sure if if it's, it's like it's default it's a white color or something. So um, uh, I like there's there's basically a few buttons here that you can get used to. So this one is, uh, compile, which is like, um, it will build the the LaTeX files and then it will save the PDF. And like this one is like build and view. So it's basically compile and you show it and by the side or something. So like if you want to do a hello world, it's uh, something like this. And yeah, so it just like, if you want to write a comment, like say you want to like, I have a to-do here, like, um, change this later. And yeah, it doesn't affect the, it doesn't affect the, the output stuff. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, okay, so all white space, uh, in, in LaTeX spaces are treated a little bit differently. For, um, so all white space characters are treated as space. So what this means is that, um, let's say I have a, like say, like, so the end, like a new line character is also considered a white space character and a tab character is also considered a new space character. So uh, if you have like enter here and then you have like something say uh, here, and then when you, when you compile it, you see that here is actually like, not on a new line, like it's treated as a single white space, then the, this, this new line character. And if you actually want this to be like on a new paragraph, you have to put like um, two, two new lines. Um, yeah, so there will be a new paragraph. Um, you have several consecutive spaces, it's also treated as one space. So like, yeah, if you try to like have like a lot of spaces here, then it will just be treated as one. Um, like leading and trailing spaces are ignored. Like see, I have, I have some leading spaces here and like similarly trailing spaces, they're also ignored. And uh, yeah, a single line break is treated as a space and two or more line breaks means a new paragraph. Um, yeah, so this is just like a demonstration. I think I've already done it. Yeah, so... Um, in most programming languages, there are like say reserved um, words or like characters. And yeah, so in LaTeX, these are the reserved characters that you can't use in normal text without like some kind of escape character. So uh, if you want to use this as like the, like the, in the plain text format, you have to like use the, you have to escape it. So some of these uh, escapes, you have to add a empty argument 
just quickly check that the comments, uh, sorry, the, the chat. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so the recording will be shared. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like, like without, so, so for some of this, uh, without uh, this, uh, let's say you want the carrot and you don't have this empty braces, it will be treated like a, it'll be treated like, a, what's that called? Like an accent. So like, uh, let's say I have something like, let's say I want a carrot here and then I want like something like an E. Yeah, and then if, if I some, okay, let's say I have something here and sorry. Yeah, so this will be treated like as, a, as this little carrot on top. So if I want this as a standalone character, I have to provide an empty argument and then like this will be a standalone. Yeah, so similarly, um, curly braces, you have to escape it. Um, this two, this two, tilde sign, you also have to put an empty argument. And then for, if you actually want to type a backslash for whatever reason, you have to uh, text backslash because uh, double backslash means a new line. Yeah, so if like say I appear, so normally this will be like just a single line, but if I double backslash, it's, it, it actually breaks the line. Okay, so um, if you use like, okay, yeah. Uh, if you use like uh this left arrow, right, right arrow, you might also want to change it to like text less and text greater because like they don't, they might not show correctly. Like say I have something like this. Yeah, they just show as some nonsense. Um, Yeah, there's some other special cases. If your square brackets are not working, you can try to add an empty argument here before you do your square brackets. Yeah, so um, just like other programming languages, uh, LaTeX has its own package system. So the package manager is called um, C10. I, I think it's like something like comprehensive tech archive network or something. Yeah, um, so you can use you can import a package using this syntax, use package and the package name and to like import it. So I package, the, the package may import other packages and like, yeah, all, all the stuff will be like imported properly. Um, okay, so next we'll go through some commands, I think. Um, okay, so I've already, we're already here. Okay, document class. Okay, so, um, this is most of the time you might use, um, if, you're, if you're not like using some uh, predefined your own class, you probably use article document class. Um, so uh, this defines like the formatting standard to follow. I think there's like article, there's like report for longer stuff than articles. Article just means like, um, like research articles. Yeah. yeah. This is like books, which like you can like have chapters in a certain book or something. And yeah, so and other document classes, like if you have a, if you're submitting to like certain publications, you can they might de define a document class and you just like have to put that document class in the same directory and then you can just like use, use the document class as such. Yeah. Beamer for presentations. So other stuff you can change, uh, the size of paper, the font size, like whether you want the title page to be on the same page or a different page. So I just like, yeah, quickly show this. Um, so you show like the argue, the like the option argument. So maybe like um, twelve point, fourteen point. Why is it not changing? Am I already at fourteen points? Okay, for some reason, this is not changing. Um, let me see. Hmm. Okay, let me let me try on the, the this 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 thing. Maybe maybe I'm I'm writing it wrong. Yeah. Let's see if I can just say something here. Maybe I need to. 
Yeah, so every time you make changes, you have to recompile for it to show. I think I'm doing something wrong. Is it I, I usually don't change these settings. So yeah, I okay, maybe maybe it's you size. Let, let's try it for later. Yeah, I think I think as you size is just that it's a bit hard to tell. I'm not sure why the font is not changing. Um let me see. Yeah, look at this. 11 point. Yeah, it should be correct according to Wikipedia. I don't know why it's not changing. Um, let's see if I change it to a tiny font. Okay, I, I don't know why the font is not changing, but um, usually you won't be changing this here. I think usually you can just use like slash tiny or something instead. Um, yeah, okay, I, 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 I have no idea why this is not changing. Yeah, it should be changing. Um, okay, so the slash begin document, which is the, um, basically everything you write will be in between these two, like the slash begin and slash end. And anything before it's called the preamble. So like um, all your imports and your title, your author, your date and all that stuff. Um, so after after you slash end document, like everything else be behind it is ignored. Um, okay, yeah. So the be, before the um, slash begin, you can like write your preamble, which is like all the title and stuff. Yeah, you can see. Let's just quickly. Um, oh, I need to include the make title page or something. What do you call make title? Yeah, so you have the this kind of like title stuff. Um, so yeah, if, if you are like just using today's date, you can just, I think there's a handy shortcut. You can just write today and it should, yeah, but you put the correct date. Um, okay. So um, yeah, so in this se sectioning is kind of like, um, it's kind of like in, in, mark in markup, you have like this uh, H1, H2, H3 kind of stuff. So the like LaTeX, you have section, subsection, sub subsection, and you will get like num section numbers. So um, like say I have something like this. Uh, let's say I have a slash section first, and subsection. Yeah. So you have like one one point one, and then after the sub subsection will be one point one point one, and then you have all the nut section numbers. So if you don't want a section number, you can add a star here. And you can also have this, LaTeX will automatically make a table of contents for you. So you can just like, yeah, you can just um, like when you, you, it's automatically updated. So if just, if you have like say another new subsection here, um, so wait, why is the table contents not on? Yeah, okay, sometimes sometimes in LaTeX you have to run multiple times for the output to be formatted correctly. Um, it's like there's intermediate files and you have to like build it like more than once. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so if, you, if your section is unnumbered, you will not be included in the table of contents unless you explicitly add like this line before the, so after the section. Okay, so um, you can change um, the font, like as in you want to, if you want to italicize something, um, you can use a slash m. So like um, say I want to um, italicize this. Like you can see the, the this row is italicized. 
And um, the other way of doing it is like to use like some kind of, uh, there's another way of doing it, which is so just not with like this, the, like the command kind of syntax, but you can also use the environment, like so you can like, like grab something like this. And then if you just like shift this whole bunch of stuff here, then, uh, sorry, I need to show why this is. Hmm, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it's good to change it to IT. Yeah, okay, so for some reason, um, the env doesn't work for like more than, yeah, it's, but IT also works for like, if you want to italicize a big chunk of text. Um, okay, so if you, if you emphasize the text, Again, in the emphasize block, you will just revert back to the normal font. And like, so these are some other like font styles. So um, text, usually the ones you use is besides italicize will be bold, like your bold will be text, bold font, BF, small caps and up, uppercase. And like, if you want to like, something like looks like a bit like code, you can like use this. So um, let's say you have like something like here. Uh, okay, so I shouldn't do this in here. And maybe like, um, let's say this line and let me just run it. Um, yeah, so it, it will look a bit more like, uh, let me just make this line a bit longer. Yeah, so it will be this like um, mono spaced font, which um, sometimes you wanna like, it looks a bit like code in a sense. Okay, let me see if there's any. <laughs> yeah, okay, so if you want to like, um, say you have a bit of text that you want to um, change the size of, you can use um, some of this. So that's like tiny, like this, this is large, and this large is slightly larger than this large, and this large is also slightly larger than this large. So like, yeah, if you try something like this. Yeah, so you can see that it's quite a bit bigger. Um, okay, so, um, so there's also like, um, so LaTeX, there's this like um, algorithm to uh, intelligently tell you like where lines should break and stuff. And um, like sometimes it also break a certain long work into like just uh, into like a new line, like using a, a, a the hyphen. So you can use a, like a tilde sign to tell them in LaTeX not to change the space into a line break. Like maybe for some reason you want the word there. I'm not sure if I can demonstrate this. Okay, maybe I can try this. Put in some lorem so I have a, like a strong chunk text. Let's see how to. Yeah, let me see if I can find an example. Let's say, um, okay, so this line seems to be quite widely spaced. Um, maybe it's here. So maybe instead of this, I put a tilde sign. Yeah, so the this, this then these two words will not be broken away in a sense. Yeah. Like so you can see that LaTeX tries to like space all the characters and like try to mix everything like justified properly, left and right justified. Yeah, but you can try to like break its like the default rules if you want. Yeah. Okay, so um, for controlling, okay, so I can see line spacing is basically the this spacing between like this like uh, lines, and you can use package set space, and then you can like try to change it to increase the spacing and stuff if you find it like too cramped. But yeah, so you can just like import this, use package set space, and then you can just um, 
if you, if, you, if you use this syntax, then only like the text that's between these two, uh, between the environment will be changed. But yeah, if you just use the single command, then the entire, the, the, like, the entire scope will be changed. Yeah, so one um, small quote of LaTeX is that the quotation marks, um, let's say I, let's say I want to quote Lauren Ibsen here. If I just type the quotation marks like normally, like you can see like it doesn't, it, it's kind of wrong. Like I have to do it like to backslash kind of stuff. Yeah, to make it like the proper one. So the, the, the back, so it's not backslash, like the two back ticks. Yeah, so you have to, the open the open quotation marks here. You use the like back ticks instead of like the normal quotation. Okay. Um. Yeah. So default. Um. The default arrangement of text, as you can see, is like just properly justified. But if you want, like, say, uh, everything to justify left or everything to justify right, you can use um, like ragged right. So if you. Well, the reason why it's ragged right is because when it's like everything is flushed to left, like the right side is like ragged. Yeah, and then so I think maybe I just demonstrate this. Um, maybe I can have a... Yeah, so now, now you can see like the text is kind of like centered. And yeah, if you want like ragged left. Um, okay, yeah, I, I, I can't really tell because I think there's too much text. Um, seems fine to me. Oh, did I type it wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure if I can change it a bit. Let me see what happens if I delete this. Hmm. Record left. It should be. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, the environment. Sorry, the environment is flush left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the environment is yeah flush, flush, flush right, flush right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that works. Yeah, so some, some of the some sometimes the, the environment name and the command name is same, sometimes it's different. So you have to just um, take note. Um okay, uh, so paragraph indentation. So as, as you can see, like the usually the um, like the first like if I remove this, like the first paragraph is not indented, but subsequent paragraphs in the section they are indented. So this is like some um, some convention. Um, if you don't want to have this convention, I think you can just uh, import like a certain package. I think it's called um, no indent first or something. Yeah, and then you uh, sorry, in, in, indent indent first. Yeah, and, and then and then it, all the first paragraphs will be indented. Yeah, but if not, you can just like if you want to force indent, you can just like use this and like I think this should work. Okay, I'm not sure why this is not stash indent at the beginning of the paragraph. Okay, but maybe, maybe it doesn't work because it's the first paragraph. Maybe I have to use the um, use the uh, indent. Yeah, so if you use like this package, then you will indent the first. Paragraph. Okay. Um. So yeah, if you want to make uh paragraphs boundary clear using um no indentation, then you need like vertical spacing. So um maybe I can just demonstrate this. So sometimes like instead of like this indentation style you maybe you want like um like a different style maybe like you want... yeah so this would be like a, a, like a different style like you don't have the indentation but you have like a line line bricks uh 
Um, okay, so if you don't want the LaTeX to like format the text, you can use this um, slash verbal team environment and then you would like just reproduce every character, including all the spaces and stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, so if you, so oh, usually um, sometimes in PDFs, you have like links and stuff. So for, if you want to like have links in your, um, in your PDF, you can like use hyperref package and this um, slash URL command. So I will just um, quickly show this. Um, yeah. And then let's say I want to so have like a URL somewhere here. Yeah, so if you then on the PDF, you click this link, you just go to the page. All right. Um, okay, let's go through some um, mathematics. So one of the biggest strengths of LaTeX is uh, actually to, like, besides writing text, you can write like equations and stuff. And type citing with LaTeX is like one of the greatest strengths. Like if you use like some other word processor, um, okay, I'm not sure about Microsoft Word, but like for like pages and like Google Docs, um, you still have to type in like, like kind of like stuff that looks like LaTeX. Um, and it doesn't work as, as well, yeah. Um, so usually for math, you need this um, package that's called um, AMS math, but uh, you can also use math tools, which is like a package that imports AMF, AMS math for you. So, and like, yes, some additional stuff. So you can just like use this package. Um, yeah, so when you want to write math, you have to, um, start an equation, so-called like a math equation environment. So uh, you, how you can start one is like, you can use slash begin equation, or you can like use this uh, shorthand. Yeah, so if, if you use slash equation, the equations will be numbered automatically. Yeah, so let's say um, I, want, I want this ei pi plus one equals to five. And uh, oh, that's a good place to put this. Right, let me put this here. First, let me. And yeah, um, let's say I want something like uh, e to the power of um, I say i plus so i pi, and this is equals to something. What's it equals to like five? Or plus one equals to five. Yeah, so you have a number equation here. So if you don't want like this style, you can also like, like sometimes you want to just like, you don't want a line break. You, you can also write it in line. Like, like if you inline, if you inline it, the syntax is like this. So you two dollar signs and then, and then this will be like in line. Yeah, so I mean, you can also use this syntax, but my personal preference is still this. Yeah, okay, so you can inline it using this um, dollar sign symbol. So this inline syntax also works on some flavors of Markdown. Um, yeah, so uh, if, if, if you never used a LaTeX for mathematics before, you, it might take some time to get used to what all the commands are. So um, some, uh, you can visit this link to, uh, this link opens in the, yeah, so, so you can visit this link to um, look at some of the um, commands and if not, you can try to draw stuff out. So maybe I, maybe I can quickly demo this and just copy link. Okay, so um, let's say, if you want to do like a conjugate transpose and you see like some something that looks like kind of like this and you don't know what this is called. Yeah, so it's called a dex. Okay, so actually you can call it, it's called a slash dagger, but I'm not sure why the dagger didn't come out. Maybe I had to add a bit more. 
okay, never mind. It's just, it's just being more and more messed up. Yeah, but you, you can, if you have some like foreign symbol, you don't know what it's called, you can trust, try to search it up like this. Yeah. Um, or you can try to take an image of um, your equation and hopefully it works. But if your handwriting is messy like mine, then this um, will not work. Yeah. So if you want like powers, you can use the carrot to raise the power and underscore to lower it. So okay, let's say I want to type set. Okay, yeah. So if you more than one expression is raised or lowered, then you need to group them using curly braces. So maybe I'll just demonstrate this part. Um so give me a moment. Let me so it's K and let me let me open my PDF editor. So that I can reference this. Okay. So why is this so small? Whoa, okay, 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 okay. Let me just sorry, I give me a moment. Oh, that was not the I pressed the moment. Okay, so let me just create a new equation environment. Oh, okay. So I have k and I want to like power of n plus one. But if you, um, say, let's say if you don't use curly braces and you do something like this, yeah, you will get k n and then the plus one will be treated as like a separate kind of like entity. But if you want to group them together, you have to put like curly brace. To like kind of like bracket them together, and then this will be like the n plus one will be like in the subscript, and then let's say you want like n squared. So in in this case, the two there's no like other stuff behind the two, so I can just write it like this. Yeah, if it's a single number, it it is it's fine. Like I, I don't I don't need like oh sorry, if it's a, it's a single number, it's not fine. Like yeah, it, it's only a single digit. Yeah, so uh, n squared plus to the power of two and underscore n. So like if you have this, you have, yeah, so you can switch these two around. So let's say um, this, this will also produce the same thing. And minus k to the power and minus one, sorry, not spoken. Yeah, so this is like, it will, it will look kind of nice and so one advantage of LaTeX, if you try to write some of these like subscripts and stuff in your normal page, sometimes it gets a bit cramped. So, so LaTeX, it just looks all neat and stuff. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, okay, why am I here? Um, okay, I think I was here, okay. Yeah, so other stuff you can do, like you can create a fraction of binomials. Yeah, so let's say I have, okay, so one thing about equation, if you try to like say, maybe, let's let just create, a, a, if I write a new equation, um, it doesn't, like, you, you, can't, you can't really make a new line, a new equation, you, uh, you, can, you can use the, before that you can use something like a line or gather, I'll show it later, but for now I'll just delete this uh, equation. Um, yeah, so um, if you want to, yeah, so uh, slash frac. Let's say you want like something like two over n. So the first argument is the numerator, and the second argument is the denominator, and and then you get this nicely formatted fraction. And for binomials, it's similar to the fraction. Like the first argument is the top number. And yeah, why did this become small again? So just, just let me just sort this out. Okay. Um, yeah, so oh whoa, 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 whoa. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh yeah, so you can have square roots. Square roots work like something like this. So um okay, I demonstrate square root because it's quite unique. Um but let's say I have a square root, I want to square root something. Um, let's say I square root n. So usually when you square root, it will just be the power, the root two. But if you like say you want like a root 
four or something, you have to put an optional argument, which is like the square bracket. And then you have this four. So this, this argument is, the square bracket arguments can be omitted if you don't want them. Uh, yeah, okay, so sums and integrals are another thing you can do. So you can use, for this summation thing, you can just uh, slash sum, and then for integration, this integration symbol, you can use slash int. And so, um, yeah, if you, if you want like the, let's say summation from i equals to one to 10, you just underscore curly brace i equals to one and then um, the carrot and then 10. So yeah, and that will give you this. But if you like, let's say if you want like the 10 to appear like here instead of like sideways, you can use um, an, like some limits, yeah, and, 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 and additional, like this addi additional term here to make the 10 appear upstairs. And similarly for integration, um, you see uh, integrate from zero to infinity. So I know like this lower, lower zero and uh, upper carrot infinity. And this will give me this. And if I want it to be up, upstairs, I just add in the additional limits term. And yeah. So um, yeah, as you can see all this like uh, DX, DX, you can just type in your normal English and you will format it to look like something like italicized DX and this italicized T as well. So this like in, it, only in the math environment, you will look like this. So there's other big commands. So like, the, so big command is like, like, uh, like this big one, like this su summation thing here. So in summation, there's also like this product, it's also like this union and intersection, this big union and big intersection. You can also have the upper and the lower stuff here. Yeah, okay. So um, some ways you can make brackets. In, so usually you, if you know, normal brackets, you can just type them normally. Same, same goes for your square brackets. But for your curly braces, um, because curly brace is like a special character, you have to escape and then if you're like trying to uh, modulo something, you can just type your, this, this character here. But if you want like say uh, this L2 norm, then you need like a backslash and, 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 the, and this, this character. So like this, this produces like this thing. And then this you just L angle, R angle. And then this is like floor, L, R floor, L floor and like, Similarly, L ceiling, R ceiling. I oh, sorry, ceiling is this one, floor is this one. And then there's the, like this upper left corner, upper right corner. Yeah, okay, so, um, so, so there's also like special commands you can use to um, increase, like, like say you want like, say, like, let's say you have this expression, like uh, A equals to two, and like fraction a square over b square greater than four. So it, it will normally it will look like this. But let's say you want the brackets to be a bit bigger, you can like have a slash left and a slash right. Um, you have a slash left and a slash right. Um, like before before the bracket, and it will become bigger. And if you want to line the middle line to become taller, instead of this 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 line here, you can you can just call it a slash middle. And then you have the, 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 the tall line as well. Okay. Um, so some exercises, um, maybe I'll just, yeah, so all this stuff, um, you can kind of, so this line you can probably type it out using just like normal characters, don't need any special characters. And so this one, there's a, like this infinity symbol, which is slash infinity and this one is a Greek character called Rho. If you can check Google LaTeX Rho or Google LaTeX Greek characters to try to figure out. And um, similarly for this one, you don't need any special symbols. Yeah, for, for this one, last one is a special case. Um, so this R is like a special font. Yeah, but otherwise you can try, um, maybe you can try this tree. Um, uh, maybe wait for five minutes. And in the meantime, if any of you got any questions, can um, ask me. Need math tools. Um, so 
you don't really if you need AMS math, but yeah, math tools and I mean you math tools is like a super set of AMS math, I would say. Yeah. So without without AMS math, some of the stuff like this binomial and this kind of stuff would not work. What environment is being used? Um, so previously I was typing on um, Tech Studio, but if you're not using Tech Studio, you can always use um, Overleaf, which I mean, oh, works the same. And afterwards, you can just download the PDF and stuff. It's just that the yeah, you can't you can't change some of the stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, so for creating math reports, yeah, absolutely. So besides, there are a couple of advantages using LaTeX. So besides like neatness and stuff, like at, at first it, it's a bit slow, but after a while when you get like faster at it, you find that actually, because like for certain math proofs, you have to repeat a certain line and maybe just change a small subset of stuff. So like you can just copy the entire line and you can just paste it instead of like having to rewrite the entire thing by hand. How do we create a large curly brace with two lines? Like when you're defining absolute values. You mean, so you do, do you mean like this, this curly brace? I, I, large curly brace with two lines. When you're defining absolute values. Oh yeah, so you can just use a backslash and a normal curly brace. Like, like, go back to this. Like, oh, sorry, like, I'll keep this here. Like, just a, uh, so maybe I'll send you some chat. I think just this, yeah. Problem again. Um, okay, so I guess we'll try to con continue. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's just write it here. Okay, so um, I'll be. I right, first I, I can introduce like this new environment, equation environment. You can quite gather. So it's kind of like it's kind of like equations, but you can have more than one equations. Um, so, like, uh, yeah. So it, like you can just create a new new line of equations using double backslash and stuff. Okay, so let me go and open up the. Yep. So the first one is, uh, n choose r. So I have a slash binom. Error message got same problem as. Environment math tools undefined. Okay, if you have environment math tools undefined, uh, maybe you can try try using the overleaf environment. Maybe I suspect maybe the LaTeX installation. I'm not sure. Try using the overleaf. Yes. Uh, use package. 
Oh, so you don't have to, you know, so you don't have to slash begin math tools. Yeah, yeah. Use package math tools. Yeah, so I see that. Yeah. Use package math tools. Okay, so yeah, you can use slash begin equation and stuff. Yep, so okay, the first line, um, n choose r, so just n choose r equals to um, ncr. So um, there's a special, it's, it's quite a weird way of doing it, ncr. Uh, I think math, okay, okay. Uh, like if you just do it normally, like try to like underscore n and like, Actually, you try this at C, and then you have an underscore R, and try to see the result. And you see, like, the N is kind of, like, weirdly positioned. Like, because that's because, like, the um, the underscore tries to match a previous character, and, like, assign the subscript to something. But in this case, I don't want the N to be a subscript of e grid that is equal sign, so I have to make an empty, like, an empty argument here. And then now this will be, like, correctly formatted. And so let's say I want another equal sign. And this is, uh, so immediately I see a fraction. I can just type track. Numerator seems to be N here. R and N minus R. I'm sure like the extra bracket seems like it. This, this bracket highlighting is very hard to. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's try. So yeah, this and let's say I have a different one. And choose R. Okay, I, I, I don't really want to type it. So, I'm just going to play. so if you just not type type a, like a normal times, um, like like you can see this this will not be the times that you want. Like you need to have slash slash times. And yeah, so you can also use like. Um, for multiplication, other stuff you can use is C dot. And this will just like give you the dot. Um, R. So NPR. NPR is kind of the same. You can just change this. Yep, so, so something like this. And uh, it like, you can, if you want like a space here, um, backslash space, I think gives you a space, yeah. Oh yeah, you, so you don't, you don't slash begin math tools. Uh, you slash begin like equation or you, you use package math tools, but afterwards you don't slash begin math tools. Yeah, so this is like the, the import, yeah. Okay, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. So, okay, so I can create a new line of equation here. So the next one, um, I have a limit that goes from n that tends to infinity. I think this is right arrow and infinity. And I have uh, some kind of zero track. And this will be a n plus one a n. Let's see if that works. Okay, I think maybe I have to see if I can make this bigger. Yep, okay. So like sometimes if the uh, you need to make it like a bit bigger, you can just um, slash left, slash right, I think. Um, Make it bigger, and that is equals to the Greek letter rho. And now for the new line, d square by okay, okay. So um, d square by square, and if you run this. Oops, I think I screwed something. <laughs> D, D square Y. Yeah, so you run this, you get this thing that kind of looks correct. So plus P, but for all the, all the other like algebraic kind of letters, you can just write like normal English stuff. 
y so you, so you can see it's not too bad writing math in LaTeX. You can just like kind of like type it out and I mean, yeah. So the key, the key thing is that if let's say next line you want to write something similar, you can just like copy the certain line like multiple times and like it's a lot. It's, it's quite a bit of time if your equations are quite long. I need to and, and, and like make a new, new line break with this double backslash. Yep, so for the last one, it's a set. So I uh, have this. So you need to escape the, this curly brace X. And then this seems to be a, I think this is a mid if I'm wrong. And X in. Okay, so this R plus, this R is like this special font. I think um, it's, it's, it's called MathBB. Um, so, but for this math pb to work, I think you have to import something else. So let's say I try to math pb r right now. Um, oh sorry, slash math pb r. Yep, you just tell me some error. And so this this error is like uh, should, this this error just means that LaTeX doesn't doesn't recognize the command, and usually means you never import something. And uh, what's it called? I think it's called EMS symbol. I think uh, EMS phone or EMS, I can't remember. Let me just try. Oh, so EMS fonts, EMS fonts. Oh, yeah. Yep, so now I get the R. And if I want the plus, I can just carry the plus here. This will give me R plus. And now I have negative one. And so if you want less than equal, you can just like LEQ, X, LEQ. Yep, so you get something like this. So, yeah. If you don't want your equations to be numbered, you can like just put a getter star here and then you end with a getter star as well. Yeah, and then you get rid of the numbers. Okay, it's shrinked again. Um, let me just. Yeah. Okay. So, um, right, we'll go through how to like add text, add math. So other stuff you want to add, like usually like say images, citations, stuff. So, um. Is there a benefit to numbering the equations? Yup. So you can, if you're writing a proof, you can like say, <laughs> reference a certain line or something using the line numbers. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So you, you can you can number the equations if you want. But if you're not if you're not referencing, it's it's fine to leave out the numbers. Um. Yeah. So if you want to like say add an image, you need to use package. Um. This graphics, graphics. Yeah. Graphics. And then you special. Specify the image directory that's uh, relative to uh, the, the main text file. And then you can include the graphics like this. And then afterwards, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so um, maybe I can. Let's see if we can try this out. This package. So I have this path. So if first I need to specify the path somewhere. Um, okay, where should I put it? Let's say I want to put it. Yeah, I want to put it here. And then afterwards I include it. So so th uh, this skill argument and there's other arguments like I think you can rotate it, you can like yeah, but, um, and then this image is basically the image file name without the extension. Um, so maybe I can see if I can demo something. Uh, okay, so I I I have one image here and. Uh, 
and let's see. This ruling cat. My, my LaTeX isn't saved, so I, I'm not sure if it will work. But it does. Sorry. File not found. Okay, maybe I have to put it in the. Maybe I have to save it in the same. Maybe I have to save it in the same downloads folder. Yep, so I get this image and I can like scale it to make it like a bit smaller and stuff. Yeah. So one way of including your, if you have like some additional figure that you need to include, you can just edit like this. But usually um, you will need to use this uh, slash figure environment and you can like, allow you to caption the image, like say figure one, something, something. Yeah, and you can like center the image and stuff. Uh, let me see, there's a question. Uh, why do I need dollar sign at the beginning? Okay, so um, the reason is that binom and all the math stuff is in the math environment. And like when you want to write math stuff, you just have to, either write it in the equation environment or you can like use this dollar sign dollar sign as an inline equation kind of syntax. Okay, so images. Okay, so another thing is uh, common for reports is uh, citations. So um, there's a couple of stuff like legacy stuff that's used, but um, I think now if you're just working on a new like report, you can ju just use a big LaTeX. So you just, um, how it works is basically, um, so I think big, big tech was, was the, the, the legacy one. Um, yeah. Um, so if, if you can just uh, inc use package bit LaTeX and you have uh, like a sample bit file somewhere. So the, the uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, the sample dot bit, let me, let me see if I have an example of how that, yeah, so, so uh, you, you sample dot bit, it's something like usually something like this. So how, how you get all this is like say you have a like a the reference manager like Zotero or uh, Mendeley, they can like create this for you. And sometimes you visit like certain research websites, you can export the citation as a deep text or something. Yeah. So um so basically all these are like oh sorry, like basically um all this author and all this stuff is like the citation. Um, stuff but how you reference it is let me see if I have a slide for how you reference it. Yeah so you can see like the first this first argument here is like the name that you call it like I, I don't know I don't know what it's called. I mean you can call it like variable name I guess you can change this name as like to whatever you want. So like if you call it this Einstein and direct you can just like inside the the paper you can just slash site Einstein and slash site direct. And then at the end, so this will give you like the, the in-text citations. And then afterwards you can like have the bibliography using this, similar to how you like create the table of contents. So the end result is something like this. You have like um, this uh, bracket numbers. And then at the end you have like this um, bibliography. So yeah, like this big file and then just need to And so another thing you can do is to add like LaTeX, there's also this package called um, PGF plots. You can use like to plot graphs and stuff. So, um, I mean, the, plot, the plotting works quite decently. You don't have to like try to plot a graph in the, the, your Excel or like your Python and stuff. Right? You can just plot it in LaTeX and it works like pretty, it, it works pretty well. Yeah, so, but I, I, um, I won't go through really this detail because there's a lot of like, options to like configure the looks and stuff. So if you want like a more detailed guide, you can like go to look at this link here and it will give you like a primer. Uh, okay, so there's also like built-in functionality for tables. So if you want like a table, you can like look at this guide. Yeah. And yeah, so, um, Yes, if you want like more resources, um, Overleaf has a lot of um, well-written guides on like a lot of stuff, like 
um, plotting and like troubleshooting or like yeah. So if you just read the overly those like articles, like the introduction articles, I say you'll be pretty good to go. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's the end of the workshop. I mean, uh, maybe I'll stay a while back for like questions and stuff, but otherwise um, I would appreciate if you can like fill in the feedback form and if you haven't, you can join the Telegram group for NUS hackers and stuff.